All right, hey guys. Um, today I'm making a video that has been requested by a handful of viewers. Um, a couple of people have been asking me to make a video about how to side deck with Reasoning Gate. So that's what I'll be talking about today, how to side with Reasoning Gate. Um, I'll specifically be talking about the Dimension Fusion variant of Reasoning Gate. Um, the things I say today may be applicable to other variants of Reasoning Gate, like Stein Gate, um, but you really should take it with a grain of salt because the thoughts that I'm about to provide are mainly catered towards the Dimension Fusion version. I've been a little bit hesitant to make this video because it's kind of hard to give one size fits all guidance when it comes to siding. Um, obviously, siding is really heavily dependent on the meta game that you got that you are playing in, whether you're playing locally and it's your local meta, or you're playing online and it's the meta that um, is popular online. Um, it's really hard to give one size fits all guidance when it comes to siding. Not only that, it's also dependent on you know how you've built your deck as well as your play style. So really take everything that I'm about to say here with a grain of salt. This is just my uh, thoughts and philosophies and approach to siding with this deck. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, I do want to point out a couple of things about the Reasoning Gate deck with Dimension Fusion. Uh, first, because it's really important to understand this, and this definitely influences how you side and what your different side deck options are. Um, so it should go without saying that this is a combo based deck, right? Therefore, you have combo pieces and certain cards that you need in the main deck for the combo to function and for the deck to function, right? Like, first of all, you need chaos monsters, you need light and dark targets, you need dimension fusion, you need monster gate, you need reasoning. Uh, debatable whether or not you need reasoning, but you definitely need Monster Gate, and you definitely need Light and Dark Targets, Chaos, and Dimension Fusion. And you can't really take these out of the deck uh, without affecting how the deck functions and how, how smoothly it runs, right? Not only that, with Reasoning Gate decks, um, because of reasoning, you need to have or maintain a certain level ratio, right? Different people have different preferences. Some people run multiple... Uh, sorry, three Sacred Cranes, you know, three level fours. I like to keep it to two because I don't want to give my opponent too high uh, likelihood of calling reasoning correctly. But the main point is uh, you don't have a whole lot of flexibility with the levels of the monsters that you play. And this is relevant because a lot of the best side deck cards are monsters and specifically level four monsters, right? A lot of the best ones are level four. Um, like Tribe Infecting Virus would be a good side choice uh, for this deck. Uh, if, if it weren't level 4, right? Uh, because you don't want to mess around with the level ratio too much, or if you do, um, you know, you want to keep it in your favor, or rather reduce or minimize the chances of your opponent getting reasoning correct, right? So just something to take into account here. And then also, you also you want to maintain um, a, light to, a certain light to dark ratio, right? If you're signing in too many cards that are not light or dark, it's going to hinder your ability to summon your chaos monsters and ultimately pull off the main combo of the deck, right? So because of these reasons, the side deck options for this deck are a lot more limited than for other decks. Like I think the side deck is pretty inflexible for this deck in comparison to other decks, even in comparison to the Steingate version of this deck. Uh, one really simple call out, uh, one really obvious call out is that like Nobleman conflicts with Dimension Fusion because you're feeling your opponents removed from play, and then when you Dimension Fusion, they'll get them back. In the Cyberstein version, that's not a problem, right? The Cyberstein version also has the potential to OTK with just one monster. This, this deck needs to attack with multiple monsters. So things like this um, you know, affect your side deck choices. So just want to call that out in the beginning of this video as well. Um, what I'll be doing in this video, I will be going over um, cards that opponents typically side against this deck because uh, with, when siding, you know, it's equally if not more important to side for the cards that you expect your, your opponent to side in against you as it is to side against the actual deck that they're playing. So I'll be reviewing cards that a lot of people choose to side in against this deck and some of the most, um, you know, potent or impactful options against this deck. Then I will be going over a list of all the cards I could think of that you might want to side in your sideboard for this deck. Um, and then finally, I'll be talking about my specific side deck and how I and how I use it. So with that, let's go into the cards that a lot of people choose to side in against Reasoning Gate. And uh, these picks are not specific to the Dimension Fusion one necessarily. Uh, I think a lot of these are just cards that if people have it in their sideboard, they would 
likely sided in against any Reasoning Gate deck, except maybe Kaiku. So first off, the obvious choice, Spell Canceler. Uh, if your opponent gets, on, gets this on board, it's going to be very hard for you to win. You just need to um, prepare for this and have cards, you know, maybe trap cards that can be an out to Spell Canceler. Uh, similarly, you have Jaugen, very, very uh, good against the Reasoning Gate deck. A little bit less potent than Spell Canceler because, um, for example, Crane can run over this. Um, but against an established board, this can just destroy your entire board. And uh, if your opponent summons this alongside a Chaos Monster like BLS or something, then it's going to be very hard for you to win. So just keep in mind, these two are some of the most potent cards against this deck. Then you have other cards that are good choices that really hurt the deck, but not nearly as much as Jaugen and, and Spell Cancel, in my opinion. If, if your opponent has a way to protect these cards, it's going to be very hard for you to win. Uh, Kaiku, it stops you from summoning Chaos Monsters. Um, depending on the skill level and the familiarity of the player with the Reasoning Gate deck, they can sometimes make mistakes where they banish your Cranes or other cards in the grave and fuel your Dimension Fusion. So something to think about. Uh, King Tiger Wangu and Asura Priest, both good for stopping your scapegoat plays, which um, often are what gets the deck going. Uh, King Tiger, you obviously can't use scapegoats or Thousand Eyes. Um, so if your opponent gets this with a way to protect it early on, it could be tricky. Asura Priest, similar, similar story here, except that it's good because it does not leave a monster on the board. A lot of aggro decks will side this in, and then it doesn't stick on the board, so you will not be able to Snatch Steal or Thousand Eyes or Brain Control it, which can you know, be, be pretty relevant sometimes. Uh, Kribo, you know, not super common, but some, some decks, I think this could be decent in Chaos, uh, might choose to put this in. But my main point with showing Kribo here is that even if your opponent has a completely empty board uh, post-siding, you have to keep in mind they might have a Kribo in their hand um, that they're waiting. You might think you're safe because you're not seeing any threatening boards and there's nothing on the board, but they could always have a Kribo. You never know. I've actually lost to this card before <laughs> um, playing this deck. So Necro Valley, not really as much of a side deck card. I've seen it sided, um, but just another really good card against this deck. Like If the deck can play it, like maybe an aggro warrior deck, I could see them siding this in. Um, very hard to play through this, so keep in mind. Then you have Curse Seal and Magic Jammer doing similar things here, stopping your power spells. Uh, Forbidden Spell being a little bit more potent because it keeps you from using any of that spell for the rest of the game. Uh, then you have Threatening Roar, common side deck. This is just generic uh, side deck card against any OTK based deck, especially the Steingate one as well. Um, so. Yeah, just be aware of that. And then Wabuku doing a similar thing to Threatening Roar, right? Very similar. Um, yeah, so these are the common cards I see people siding in against Reasoning Gate-based decks. Uh, so you have to plan your sideboard around the potential that your opponent might put these in, right? Uh, now I will be going over all of the possible side deck choices I could think of. Uh, this might not be an exhaustive list, so if I've missed anything really important here, please do let me know in the comments. But these are all just cards that you know I've thought about or have experimented with that I think could be viable options for the Reasoning Gate deck, um, specifically with Dimension Fusion again. Uh, the first three rows are the more viable picks that I would recommend. The last two are you know just random texts or just really food for thought like I'm not really sure I would recommend any of these last two rows um, but they're just there um, maybe to plant some seeds and just food for thought so this is an order of matchup um, so I'll just go through the list and kind of explain the different choices and why you might want to play them uh, the first few cards are for warriors or for aggro decks uh, you have cypher soldier also called kinetic soldier um, this is good because it's level 3, so it doesn't really mess up your level ratio at all. Not that great because it's Earth Attribute. Um, something to keep in mind, so you would put this in against Warriors, but something to keep in mind is post side. Um, they likely, they, they may not have that many Warriors in their deck post side, right? Like, if they have three Kaikus, they'll leave those in for sure. Um, if they have King Tiger Wangu or um, a Sura Priest, that means that post side, they could have, you know, potentially six or seven non-warriors in the deck, which is half of their monster lineup. So this card just becomes a little less impactful uh, than you think it might be. Uh, and, you know, when it hits the board, usually with Reason Gate, you want the monster that hits the board to be pretty impactful. And this could be lackluster uh, for those reasons that I just said. So something to think about. 
Uh, you have brain control, which is really good because you can force your opponent to go two for one, take their monster and attack them with it. Maybe they Sakuretsu, then you trade two for one. Or if you take their monster and crash it into you know the same monster, that could also be two for one. And then you could also just use this to get uh, floodgate monsters like Kaiku, Jaugen, King Tiger Wangu off the field and obviously tribute it for monster gate or tribute monster, right? So brain control is pretty good against aggro. Also because they'll be leaving monsters face up more often than not. Then you have Swords and Messenger of Peace, um, both stopping your opponent from attacking, obviously. Um, swords is nice because um, you could still attack, which is a pretty big deal. And you could also bounce it back with Giant Trunade. Messenger of Peace is nice because it lasts indefinitely and you can shut it off whenever you want, but you can't attack. And cards like aggro cards, like I don't know if your opponent's playing Sangin, uh, you know, Exiled Force, Don Zalug, they can all get under this because it only stops monsters with 1500 or more attack. Uh, so there's a trade off. I think Swords is better in most cases, uh, particularly because you can also attack, which is a big deal. And then uh, if they're playing a trap heavy lineup, then you have Roll of Decree. Obviously, this is a pretty standard pick these days in the sideboard. Uh, the next few cards are for Chaos. Uh, there's really not too many. Um, Royal Decree also, you know, uh, good side deck against Chaos, especially if they're playing Jar of Greeds and whatnot, uh, Solemn Judgments. Um, but you have Nobleman of Crossout and Mind Control. I already mentioned the downside of Nobleman before, that it doesn't work too well with Dimension Fusion. Um, also, Nobleman can be dead in the mid to late game if your opponent's not setting too often, or... Um, Potentially even early too, like it's kind of tricky. Um, I don't like to side in two noblemen because the opponent could be very selective with what they set face down and when they set to face down, and they might be just playing cards face up, like Kaiku and Jao Kaiku and Jaugen. So noblemen could be dead. Uh, whereas mind control, probably gonna be live at all points in the game, early, mid, and late, right? You can steal chaos monsters with it, um, you can steal flip effects with it, so uh, Mind Control, I think, is a really good side deck card uh, for this deck against Chaos. Um, next up, we have just one card for Control. <laughs> I think the deck has naturally a pretty good matchup against Control. So Control being any decks running uh, Scapegoat and Meta and Thousand Eyes. Um, the deck is a little bit slower, and you know they're not really uh, swarming the field with multiple high attack monsters. So I think the deck just naturally does a little bit better against them. So not too many cards here, I think, worth siding against Control. But Lightning Vortex, definitely a must because you can clear the whole board, their Thousand Eyes and their tokens. Really good, uh, in my opinion. Um, next up, sorry, this these two should be swapped. But uh, next up, I just had one card call out for the... One card call out? No, sorry. This uh, Ignore this Death Wombat, I'll come back to it. Uh, but the next matchup I want to talk about is the Mirror Match, where we have Spell Canceller. I mentioned it before. Um, for the same reasons, it's good in the Mirror Match, especially because you can tutor it out with Reasoning or Monster Gate. Uh, you have Threatening Roar, uh, good against OTKs, like I mentioned before. And then Magic Jammer, Curse Seal, I already covered them. Uh, you might consider citing these in your sideboard, who knows. Uh, but that's it for the Mirror Match. Uh, this card should be down here. Uh, this is for Burn. Um... Death Wombat, it's nice because it's level 3, so that's a good level for Reasoning Gate in general. It's uh, Earth, which is not that nice, but it's it's pretty good because, you know, not super impactful when it hits the board, but it forces your opponent um, to get rid of it if they want to play the game, the burn opponent, right? They'll either have to ring this, or if they have a panda that has higher attack, or snatch steal it, or something like that. But uh, it'll, it'll force out a good resource. And then you can always bring it back with like pre-mat or, or uh, call it the haunted, which is pretty nice. So definitely a, a viable option there. You have Mystic Walk. Um, the next three or next four cards either, uh, uh, what's it called? They either gain you life points or deal damage to your opponent's life points. Mystic Walk, this one is really good. So you tribute a monster and you gain either its attack or defense. What makes this good is because the deck is running a lot of high level I'm sorry, high attack and high defense monsters. So you're going to be gaining, you know, 2,000 plus life every time. But uh, the thing that makes this really good is that it's quick play. So that makes it very versatile. You can wait until your opponent has activated multiple cards in a chain and only choose to activate this if um, that chain is about to resolve and it's going to be lethal. 
and you can maybe even hold it if it's not going to be lethal. Um, you can also activate this. Sorry, you can also activate this in the draw phase. Um, you can also use this defensively, tribute your monster if your opponent tries to ring of destruction it or snatch steal it, anything like that. And then the final reason why I think this is particularly good for the Dimension Fusion version of Reasoning Gate is because, you know, it serves a similar purpose as Metamorphosis or Monster Gate in the fact that it helps you get your Dark Magician of Chaos off the field uh, and in the Banish, so you can bring it back with Dim Fusion. So you can tribute it, you know, gain 2,800 uh, life points, and then bring it back with Dimension Fusion, which is pretty sweet. Um, so really good pick. You have Mass Driver and uh, Toga Thanksgiving. These are both uh, the main point. Oh, sorry. One of the main plays with Mystic Walk 2 is obviously tributing the Ojama token. You tribute it so you don't take any damage because it wasn't destroyed. And then you gain 1,000 life because they have 1,000 defense. And then um, you're also just saving yourself 300 because when that token would have been destroyed, you would have taken 300 damage, right? So right off the bat, you're saving yourself 1,300 life points by tributing the token. And then if you're doing it in response to your opponent's panda attack or just desserts, you're actually saving yourself another 500 life points. So that's actually, you know, 1800 right off the bat that you could potentially be saving. And then if your opponent's activating things like uh, Secret Barrel, then that's even more life that you're saving. So, yeah. Uh, Mass Driver, Token Thanksgiving, both ways to get the tokens off the field. Um, keep in mind that Token Thanksgiving destroys, so you will be taking, you know... Uh, 300 damage for each token you've destroyed, but you gain 800. So if you kill three, you take 15 and gain 24. Sorry, you take nine and gain 24, so you go plus 15, right? Uh, this card also um, should have been called out when I was talking about control. Could be used for getting rid of your opponent's tokens as well. And then um, you can also get rid of your own scapegoat tokens, and the life that you gain could be relevant because that could basically pay for another dimension fusion. So. Um, the only thing is it's not quick play, right? I think being quick play is a very a very big deal. Um, speaking of quick play, you have Poison of the Old Man. Um, either gain 1,200 or inflict 800 to your opponent. Uh, a lot of the reasons that I was saying Mystic Walk is good and that it's quick play and you know very versatile apply to Poison of the Old Man as well. And then you know some deck some burn decks are actually playing Solemn Judgment, so the burning for 800 may become relevant. You know, um, but yeah. And then finally, you have Hollow Life Barrier. So this is basically like Wabaku, except you also don't take any effect damage, and you have to discard a card. Um, pretty nice. Um, you know, it's obviously chainable because it's a trap. It's a little bit slower because it's a trap. You can't use it on your turn. Um, but it's it's pretty nice because you won't take any damage for the rest of the turn. So would consider. Um, Something to call it here is that the original text of this card says nothing about the monsters not being destroyed by battle, but in a similar way to Wabaku, it was kind of like um, implied in the card's effect that monsters are also not destroyed by battle. So you don't take any effect damage and your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Um, pretty cool card. Uh, I think in most cases, threatening more... Like, this one's cool because it's good against both OTK and Burn. So it's a little bit more versatile, but you're discarding a card, right, for cost. So just things to think about. Okay, so those are all the main matches that, you know, I want to talk about, um, you know, the main meta decks. The next uh, several cards are all just, like, generic side deck cards you can consider. You have Cyberstein, which is, uh, you know, a dark, which is nice uh, for your Chaos Monsters. It's also level 2 which is nice. Um, I would consider siding this against decks where, you know, a fusion monster could be crippling for the strategy. Like in the mirror match, sometimes just bringing out last warrior from a different planet is enough to win you the game outright. So you can consider siding Cyberstein for that. Um, but the 5,000 life points that you have to pay definitely conf conflicts with Dimension Fusion. So, I mean, that's kind of obvious, but yeah. Next up, you have Injection Fairy Lily. Could be good against aggro. It could be good to get rid of uh, monster floodgates. Um, you know, it's level 3, which is a nice level. Earth, which is uh, non-ideal. But um, I feel like the 2,000 life points is quite steep. Um, I feel like if you're going to play this in Reasoning Gate, it's probably better in the Stein version of Reasoning Gate. Um, because that deck is a little bit more uh, potent in terms of OTK potential. Than I think the Dimension Fusion one, to be honest, uh, and you know maybe the 3,400 extra damage is enough to get you there. Um, moving on, we have Tribe Infecting Virus. 
It's unfortunate that this is level four, like I mentioned earlier before. Otherwise, I would definitely side this. Um, could be good against control. Um, also really good against chaos because they're running a lot of spellcasters. Uh, they're running, you know, chaos sorcerer, magician of faith, gravekeeper spy, Jaugen, kaiku. Those are all spellcasters. So tribe could be a good card um, to out. Uh, monster floodgates or, or problems that are monsters, especially because if your plan is playing Roll Decree or Judgments, um, sorry, not Judgment, Roll Decree, they could stop your trap outs, right? And uh, Spell Canceler obviously stops your spells, so Tribe could be good for those situations. Uh, next up, you have one for one removals or uh, Book of Moon, not really removal, but kind of pseudo removal. Um, you might want to book your opponent's Jaugen or Kaiku. Uh, obviously, these don't work against Spell Canceler. But uh, note that Book of Moon could be good against um, Dark Balter because it's quick play, whereas Smashing Ground won't work against Dark Balter. So a couple cards to deal with um, monsters you know, in a one-for-one -one type of fashion. If you want a card that can deal with multiple monsters, like if your opponent's playing uh, multiple Jaugens and multiple Kaikus and they have both a Jaugen and the Kaiku on the field, right? Smashing Ground and Book Moon isn't going to cut it, right? So you have Swords of Concealing Light, where you can flip all of your opponent's monsters to face down defense position. Something to think about. I personally have not tested this, but, um, you know, something to consider if you're afraid that your opponent is going to have multiple uh, floodgates that keep you from playing the game. Next up, you have MST in the sideboard, possibly um, against Burn, because they're playing things like Level M Area B, Swords of Revealing Light, Wave Motion Cannon, things that don't get stopped by Decree. So it's good to have the extra spell and trap removal. Uh, Delinquent Duo, you can play this in the sideboard. A lot of Reasoning Gate players opt to not play this in the main board because it does not further your combo. Um, you know, it, it's, it slows your opponent down potentially, but it does not get you anywhere closer to your combo. It's also not good against Chaos because you're playing Thunder Dragons and other monsters that they want to be in the graveyard. Um, but if you're playing a deck that gets particularly hurt by Delinquent Duo, like another combo deck, like the Mirror Match, then you can consider siding Delinquent Duo, especially if you're going first. Um, would consider siding Delinquent Duo against the Mirror Match if it was in my sideboard. Okay, next up we have some generic trap cards that uh, are just good removal. You have Compulse, a super flexible card, really good card to out Thousand Eyes and Spell Canceler and Dark Balter. Uh, super flexible in that you can also bounce face downs with it. You can also bounce back your own Chaos Monsters to kind of protect them. Like if you summon a BLS and you're afraid that your opponent's going to snatch steal it uh, or something, like you can have Compulsory uh, to protect it. And then Mirror Force, Ring, and Torrential. Mirror Force, you know, pretty good against aggro. Ring, just generic removal. I don't like that it also burns yourself, which becomes relevant uh, because you're playing Dimension Fusion. And then Torrential Tribute, um, also pretty good uh, because it can get rid of set cards as well, which is kind of a big deal. Um, but I like it because it's chainable. Um, yeah, so those are all the cards I think are common uh, side deck options that you might want to consider. Uh, the next several cards are, you know, <laughs> uh, I would not recommend playing them necessarily, but just uh, something for you to think about. You have Kaiku and Mystic Swordsman level two. You might want to play this against Chaos or maybe even the Mirror Match. Mystic Swordsman, Mystic Swordsman against Chaos Turbo or um, Control maybe. But uh, this is level four, so it's not great. This is Earth, so it's not great. And both of these are not super impactful when they hit the field, so meh. Speaking of not super impactful when it hits the field, Bizer Shock. This is basically another True Nade, but I mean, it's it's a lot better than True Nade because it also bounces monsters. I just think it's not super impactful in the Dimension Fusion Reasoning Gate deck because it has such low attack, and um, like that's just a deal breaker for me in, in, uh, in my version of Reasoning Gate. In the Steingate version, however, I think this is a lot better because really that version just wants to open up the board so that it could punch your opponent directly with uh, Master of Oz and Megamorph. So I think this is actually a lot better in the Stein version than the Dimension Fusion version. And I would um, I would think that if you were going to play it, you should play it in that deck uh, rather than Dimension Fusion one. So, yeah. Um, Breaker. Uh, level Breaker and DD Warrior Lady both level four, which is not great because the level rate, the level ratio. 
Um, Breaker, you might also want to put it again against decks where spell trap removal is really necessary. Maybe you put it in against aggro. DD Warrior Lady, kind of a cool card because if you resolve its effect, you'll be able to get it back with Dimension Fusion, which is kind of nice. But uh, yeah, not too much more to say there. I probably wouldn't play them myself. Uh, and the next three, these are just, you know, <laughs> I've seen Reasoning Gate decks built around some of these cards. Um, I guess if you're playing Book of Moon, it could be cool. Or if you're playing a deck, a version that plays Book of Taiyu, these two could be kind of cool to kind of turbo you through the deck. Um, but yeah. And then next up, Necromain King. Not super popular, but if your meta has, um, what's it called? Uh, empty jar then this is probably one of the better picks to play against that um, i would probably bump this up to the top three rows because it definitely is viable but only if you're playing decks that are or are similar to empty jar right next up you have soul exchange this is cool because it can be an out to face down cards um, you can tribute your opponent's monsters for tribute monsters or monster gate uh, even metamorphosis the only thing is if they're face down you can't use them for metamorphosis but uh, just another cool card to think about. Next up, we have Offerings to the Doomed. I do not like this card very much at all. Uh, skipping your draw phase is kind of a big deal. Um, I think it's better in OTK decks because you care less about your next turn since you're trying to OTK. But um, yeah, another thing to note is that if the monster doesn't actually get destroyed, you still skip your draw phase, which sucks. Like if your opponent Book of Moons, then you still skip your draw phase. Um, it's just nice because it's quick play and it's just generic, um, flexible, uh, one for one removal, which is which is which which can be nice. I think it's again probably better in the Steingate version since um, that deck's OTK potential is 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 higher. Next up, we have Spell Shattering Arrow. This is a cool card that I think a lot of people forget about. It pops all face up spells on your opponent's side of the field, so things like Level Limit Area B. Uh, Swords of Revealing Light, Wave Motion Cannon, Messenger of Peace. Um, even if they're playing field spells like uh, Necro Valley or things like that, this will pop them all. It's quick play, which is pretty cool, and your opponent will also be burned for 500 for each one. Um, something to keep in the back of your head. Soul Release, probably not a very good card for this deck. It can kind of function like a pseudo Chaos Sorcerer by banishing your own monsters for Dimension Fusion. Uh, the deck you'd probably play this against is Chaos or Chaos Turbo. Um, but then again, you're feeling your opponents removed from play for your Dimension Fusions, which kind of sucks. But uh, I think the ideal situation would be your opponent has all of their Thunder Dragons in the grave, and maybe you've banished their uh, Magician of Faith with Knock. If you could soul release their Thunder Dragons, then you're going to slow them up, slow them down a lot because they won't be able to summon Chaos Monsters, right? So... That's that. And then Solemn Judgment, obviously this conflicts heavily with Dimension Fusion because you're playing a lot of life points, but um, the Reasoning Gate deck does struggle against decks that are playing multiple Solemn Judgment. So if you want to fight fire with fire, maybe you can consider playing this card. Probably would not recommend because you can't resolve more than one <laughs> uh, without Dimension Fusion becoming dead. Okay, so these are all the side deck cards I could think of. Let me know if I missed anything. But now I will talk about how I side with my specific... Okay, disconnected. How I side with my specific side deck. Um, so, yeah, let me go over my sideboard really quickly. Um, I've obviously just explained all these cards in the previous section. So if you're skipping ahead here, go back and you can uh, listen to my explanations. But I have a Spell Canceler, Des Wombat. Nobleman, uh, Mind Control, Brain Control, Swords of Revealing Light, MST, Mystic Walk, Double Decree, Compulse, Ring, Torrential, Mirror Force, and Threatening War. Um, before I talk about how I actually side using this sideboard, uh, I will talk about what I typically side out. A lot of people, they're like, I know what I want to side in, but what do I side out? Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the cards are combo pieces that you just cannot really side out. So let me uh, go over all the cards that I consider siding out, and then I'll let you know which ones I side out going first or second. So the cards uh, I consider siding out are Premature Burial, um, Giant Trunade, Scapegoat, uh, Monster Reincarnation, Brain Control, Metamorphosis, Upstart Goblin, Lightning Vortex, and call and right kick and break. 
those are all cards that I consider siding out, of course, for different situations. Uh, typically, when I'm going first, I want to side out cards that are not that good going first. Sometimes I'll side out things like Pre-Map, uh, Giant Trunade, Monster Reincarnation, Brain Control, maybe even a Metamorphosis because it requires setup with Scapegoat, uh, possibly Lightning Vortex, uh, because those are all cards that are not very good going first, right? Going second, I'll side out things that are less good going second, like the Traps, possibly. Um, also, Metamorphosis, um, because, sorry, <laughs> I mean, Metamorphosis is better going first because uh, you could potentially set a Scapegoat, but it doesn't do anything to advance your hand going first is what I meant. But going second, it's even worse because, like I said, you need to set up with scapegoat. So I consider signing out the traps, metamorphosis. Um, I still consider signing out monster reincarnation because uh, discarding a card early on could set you, you know, pretty behind. And um, yeah, that's what I consider signing out going second in addition to the other cards. Now, I will talk about um, why I have these different cards in here. Um, first thing I want to say is that the side deck is mainly built to deal with uh, aggro or warriors, uh, chaos, uh, burn, and and control. Yeah, mostly all the decks, but um, like I said, the deck has the easiest time with control decks. So, uh, oh, and the mirror match, of course. So for the mirror match, I have uh, spell canceller. I have um, what do I have here? I have spell canceller. I have Swords of Revealing Light. I have, um, you know, these generic trap cards, which I may decide to put in or not. And then I also have Threatening Roar. So the cards that usually come in against the Mirror Match are definitely Spell Canceler, Swords of Revealing Light, Threatening Roar, and then maybe some of these other traps. Um, against Aggro or Warriors, I have, um, what do I have here? I have Brain Control, Swords of Revealing Light, Royal Decrees, and then I have these generic traps as well. Uh, if I think my opponent is going to be siding in things like Spell Canceler or Jaugen or Kaiku, then I have I'll put in more of the generic traps. Uh, sometimes I'll even leave in Raikiki Break because Raikiki Break is actually pretty good going first or second because you can always um, you know pop in your opponent's draw phase or their standby phase. Um, but yeah, typically if I'm going first, I'm definitely putting in the Roll Decrees against Aggro if they have a heavy trap lineup. Going second, it's a little bit more debatable because they can always judgment your decree, they can always um, uh, dust tornado it, and you're already playing from behind going second, so it kind of sucks to um, you, you know, have to wait another turn to activate decree. Um, I might opt to just go uh, the trap heavy route uh, if I'm going second against aggro. Uh, I'm also only playing two roll decree just because I feel like drawing multiple roll decrees in the opening hand really hurts. Uh, generally, you just want to resolve one Royal Decree and you're not really drawing out the game long enough such that you need to see and resolve multiple Royal Decrees like when you're signing it in, hopefully. Um, and I feel like I see it enough when I played two. Okay, next up we have Chaos. Um, my only comments here are that, um, you know, I side in Nobleman and Mind Control. Usually if I'm going second, I'll put in both of these. Usually if I'm going first, I'll only put in the Mind Control because these cards are obviously, they, they obviously do nothing going first. So I'll usually just put in just the Mind Control. Um, Knock, I feel like it has a higher chance of being dead, like I said earlier before, so I kind of want to minimize that. But Mind Control is probably going to be live at any point in the game. Uh, and then uh, consider putting in some of these traps, you know, um, if they're playing a trap-heavy lineup, I'll side in and roll Decree in the same way as I just described for aggro. Um, if they're playing a lot of Floodgates, I'll consider these guys. Sometimes I even consider Threatening Roar depending on their build and their play style. A lot of the times they'll just um, try to turbo through their deck until they have like a Chaos Sorcerer and BLS and they'll go for like 6,000 plus damage in, in one turn. So you can consider siding Threatening Roar against them as well. Um, Okay, I already covered the mirror match. Uh, next up, we have control. Um, you can see I don't really have you know too much here that's specifically against control. Uh, you can consider the nobleman and the mind control for flip effects if they have a flip effect heavy deck. You can consider um, these generic traps like usually compulse, torrential, ring. They all come in against control because they're just really good against them, right? These two being really good against Thousand Eyes, this being good against Thousand Eyes and Scapegoat Tokens. Um, but like I said, the deck, you know, usually does not have a hard time with control at all. 
And then finally, burn. Uh, so decrees definitely come in against burn. Um, MST comes in for uh, their floodgates that are spells. Um, you can consider Swords of Revealing Light to keep them from attacking with Panda as well. And then obviously you have Death's Wombat, which comes in against Burn uh, too. You can consider other things like Torrential or Mirror Force because they're probably going to go aggro, you know, attacking with uh, Panda. And Torrential can also get rid of the Scapegoat tokens. But, uh, oh, a really interesting thing to point out about this deck is that it has natural resilience against Ojama tokens because you can tribute them for Monster Gate. Right, so you can tribute them, and you won't take any damage because you're not being destroyed. Um, so the deck actually kind of benefits um, from your opponent using Ojama tokens to some extent. And uh, in that regard, like I also highly consider siding out, you know, one if not all scapegoats against that deck because it's just so bad against burn. It makes their just desserts like instant 2000 burn damage for you it makes their pandas have 2800 attack right off the bat and do piercing um it's it makes their secret barrels better like it's really bad against burn so i typically try to side them out and therefore i side out also some metas usually like you know two maybe all of them depending um because you don't have scapegoats anymore and then to supplement that you have to supplement the fact that you don't have any um, scapegoat tokens to tribute anymore for like Monster Gate, you're putting in Deswa Mat, which is another normal summonable monster, and you can also consider putting another Brain Control uh, to steal your opponent's monster. Could be good for getting things like um, you know obviously Panda, um, Giant Rat. You can tribute it. Um, could be good for getting Injection Fairly off the field. Um, so yeah, that's typically what I what I do for Burn. If I'm going second against Burn. Um, it, it really depends. <laughs> I usually put in the decree, but you can also consider putting in the generic traps instead if you wanted to. Um, I think that was everything. Yeah, so that's my side deck. Um, again, this is uh, my side deck based on my play style and the decks that I often come up against. This whole video is just meant to be um, food for thought for you not necessarily to give very prescriptive guidance on how you should build your side deck, just you know a foundation for you to work with. So I hope this was informative. And uh, you know if I missed any really spicy texts when I was calling them out, let me know in the comments. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching.